Hello everyone, welcome to the Kukli Bushcraft channel. Okay, so two videos in one really today. Uh, there's two open tags that have been going round. One comes from Mad Dog Survival, one of the best channels on YouTube. I'll put a link to uh, his channel in the description. And uh, yeah, his was, what do I look for in a bushcraft knife? And the other one, I've seen lots of people doing this video. Uh, Jim Bob Outdoors and uh, Bushcraft Joe were two of them. But I believe it originated from Dutch Bushcraft Knives, which is uh, a very big channel. I'm sure you're all aware of them. Uh, but the other three channels, I'll put in the description so you can check them out. <laughs> the subject of the second tag, they've been calling it the Three Knife Challenge. So basically, you're allowed to keep three knives out of your collection. Which three knives would you choose? But, uh, yeah, let's start with the first tag. What I would look for in a bushcraft knife. What I look for in a bushcraft knife. Uh, yeah, you'll have heard similar stuff off lots of people. You know... Full tang. It's got to be full tang. Well, I'd say robust tang. You know, uh, a lot of these more are classics. The older ones and the Jernson ones are full tang. Uh, but they do tend to break. And as if you want to uh, try and batten through anything, anything substantial with them. And where they tend to break is round about here. Uh, and like I said, like I've said before, I've been using stick tang bill hooks for a very long time, and they they take quite a lot of grief. You know, I've never broke a bill hook. The same with locals; they've been used for chopping and battening for uh, God knows how many years. Uh, so this is an erapu. Uh, so it's a lowering metallic blade. Uh, the tang is very thick there, and then it tapers. It is full tang, you know. Uh, it is full tang, but it's a rat tail tang. But it's a substantial rat tail tang. Uh, and I think with uh, things like most mortars, uh, I don't know about Hulter's Fuzz. I just happen to have this on my belt. Uh, but as if it's three quarters on a rat tail tang, that's as good as it being a full tang, in my opinion. But a lot depends on how thick the tang is. So, this uh, rocker knife, this is full tang. You can, it's at least. It's at least that thick all the way through, and I would expect for it to be thicker here, uh, being that it's quite a high-end knife. Uh, I'd expect it to widen out here, but the thing is also, you don't know exactly what you're getting unless, unless it's a full exposed tang so yeah I I have to trust that it's a sturdy tang uh, I mean I've seen the tang of these <laughs> because you can buy the blade blanks just the same uh, uh, Lauri Metalli their blades are uh, are all over the place uh, and also even as if you have got a full exposed tang you know quite often they're skeletonized you know and um, as if it's skeletonized near near this point here then yeah that's a that's a weak point so yeah I've got to have an element of trust in the tang it's not necessarily got to be a hundred percent full tang. It also depends on the intended use. But for uh, for a general bushcraft knife, 
I'd uh, I'd like an exposed tang all the way around, but as if not, I'd like to at least have some kind of an in indication that it has got a really robust tang. Right, so also, also I did actually make a bushcraft knife a few years ago. I'll put in a picture of it. But one thing that I added to that, because I found with my porcos that quite often I was using the tip for slicing. And yeah, because if you've got a bit of curvature on the blade, I think it slices really nicely, which is what I did with the knife that I made myself. I put a belly on it. I just removed a little bit more material from here. I didn't forge it. I made it with uh, by stock removal. And I found it sliced really, really nicely. And uh, it was more or less based on the Condor Bush Law, which was, at the time, my go-to bushcraft knife. But yeah, I like something like this Joker Nesmuk that's got a little bit of curvature. Uh, you, you might have seen a while ago, I did a review of the Cold Steel Roach Belly. I mean, that was the... That was the idea behind getting that knife, was I wanted something with a belly uh, for a good slicing action. It wasn't a particularly good knife, so I've not really been using that. Uh, yeah. Also, it's good to have a nice sheath. The Joker has got a really nice sheath. A really nice stitching dangler. So, I like something that will hang below the straps of my rucksack. Uh, there are there are other things that work, like the uh, rocker Corpisodori, I think that's what it's called, <laughs> the Wilderness Warrior. If I can actually get it off me sheath, off me sheath, off me belt. Oh my! Okay, I'll slide it off. So this rides quite high on your belt, if you've got it on your belt. But what I've found this works well with is when I'm, when I'm out and about in my full-on winter gear, is I can clip this onto my salopet. And then uh, I've usually got my jacket open so I can just reach in and get it. As if it's cold, I'll have my jacket closed obviously. As if I'm working and likely to be using my knife, then my jacket's off. You know, uh, I mean, it's always good to have a jacket and not to need it, to not wear it, and to just put it on when you're at rest. But yeah, that's been working really nicely, clipping that onto my salopettes. Uh, similar theory with this. Baldrick rig. And... Uh, you might notice the cordage on this uh, and on the lanyard. It's uh, reflective strips uh, in the in the cordage. It's really quite handy. Uh, I use it a lot for guy lines instead of paracord. It it just helps when you're walking around with a head torch on, and just in case you drop your knife, if it's got that on it, it really stands out. And with guidelines, and when it's dark, they 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 can be a bit of a nightmare. Little tip, nothing to do with the video. Right. So another knife with a nice sheath is uh, is this one, the CC Porco. So. I also like the handle of this. I like to have a little bit of a belly here. So it gives a really good secure grip. Uh, but the sheath, I... another thing I look for is something, is things that are a bit different, you know. There's a lot that's different about this with the, with the sheath. It's, uh, it's interesting to try new things. Uh, but yeah, I mean the little, the little roller there. I mean, the retention that that gives is absolutely, absolutely incredible. You know, and you, know, you can hang this upside down with the little Velcro thingy that comes off. I've got a full review of this, but uh, yeah. 
the, the retention is absolutely amazing but it comes in and out quite easily uh, by the way with this guy I was complaining a bit about the retention when I did my little overview of it that it was too stiff and that you couldn't get it in or out it's really loosened up so yeah and now the retention is really good goes in with a nice little click and you know it's in there and it's in rock solid so did I mention the grind yeah Scandi grind or Sabre grind never hollow grind I quite like a full flat grind on a folder which I mentioned in my last video right so the other tag uh, if I had to choose three knives so certainly wouldn't be this one so what people have been choosing in general they've been choosing a, a medium sized bushcraft knife a big knife and a folder I have the folder here a moment ago I also should have another one in my pocket oh no what's going on uh, so big knife for chopping I choose a Laupu I have a couple of them uh, I have my Poro Poco which is back in England and the Arapu uh, they're the same shape handle they're exactly the same blade because uh, unless you want to pay for something fancy and hand forged they're all the same blade just with different lengths uh, and yeah they're both about 200 mil uh, the same size so which one I choose but do I really have to choose a big knife you know I do I do quite like axes uh, so folders it be either this or, or the Ganzo that I did a review on a good while ago uh, this is the little Martini Black uh, so what I like about this I like that it's cheap uh, but it's so slim uh, you know and uh, I don't use a folder all the time I don't really I don't really like a handle this thin for prolonged pr prolonged use but uh, as if it's something that's in my pocket with me wallet and me keys and whatever junk I've got in there it's nice that it's that it doesn't take up too much space so I like that about this and also I like the full flat grind uh, so as if I was going to choose a folder I'd, uh, I'd probably choose this one uh, Swiss Army knife would also be a, a good option I've got several of those I didn't bring one but yeah uh, medium sized bushcraft knife uh, it's got to be between these two and to be honest uh, I choose the Joker uh, you know uh, something else that I always look for in a bushcraft knife is uh, <laughs> you know I like to buy things that are Finnish I live in Finland and Finland does make top quality knives I tend to trust anything that's produced in Finland you know, you know that something that's finished is, is always going to be reasonable quality. Uh, this is made in Spain, but it's an absolutely great little knife for, for wood processing. And, uh, you know, a, a great little butcher knife and skinny knife as well. Uh, awful for gutting fish. <laughs> uh, it's uh, not very pointy. But as if I've got another knife, if I'm allowed three knives... Uh, which also brings me to the question do I really need a folder I mean how much do I use a folder uh, food prep uh, little fiddly things if I've only got big knives on me uh, but to be honest I, I, for anything fine I really do like the good old-fashioned Mora classic uh, 
Yeah, so if I had to choose three knives, yeah, definitely this one. Uh, I think I wouldn't bother with a folder, so more a classic. And uh, yeah, let's say I'm not allowed to have an axe, so I take a load. Oh no, that's not bushcraft. He's indoors and he's using sawn timber. Well, I have got a building site just outside. And uh, I have got snow melting as well up there by the fireplace. Is that bushcraft enough for you? Yeah, so... Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison to see how these get these knives actually feather. Uni, uni, stay away. Sharp things. Sharp things. Anyway, guys. Oh, God. It's all going wrong. Uni. 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 Well, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, <laughs> please like, subscribe and please drop us a comment. Uh, tell me what your three keeper bushcraft knives are and maybe what you look for in a bushcraft knife or better still, do a video. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you all again soon for another Cooperly Bushcraft video. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs> I know you're going to ask in the comments. Best feathers. I can't decide between these two. Uh, as for the Pelton then. The CC Poco. Uh, it's a little bit unfair. Because it's actually quite dull. I'll, uh, I'll give that a good sharpening now. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.